हेलो एवरी वन आई एम सिद्धांत टूडे द चैप्टर नंबर इज द गवर्नमेंट स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम्स टेकन बाई मी दिस चैप्टर इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एज अदर्स चैप्टर सो कीप प्रैक्टिसिंग द क्वेश्चन चैप्टर वाइज फ्रॉम द क्वेश्चन बैंक इज इम्पॉर्टेंट आफ्टर लिस्निंग यू हैव द बेसिक्स आफ्टर गेटिंग द बेसिक्स यू मस्ट हैव quite a good level of interest to solve the objective questions and when you start solving you will get more interest and more interest as you goes on so <clears throat> starting with the government sponsored scheme the taking the first one that is that is sgsy swarn jayanti swarojgar yojana this is this is a as the names is the government sponsored scheme there are two types of the schemes existed in india that is one is centrally uh, centrally sponsored scheme and other is other one is central sector scheme what's the difference in the sponsored scheme there is a contribution of the state government as well but in the centrally sector schemes there is no state government involved the whole finance will be contributed by the central government so we are taking government sponsored scheme so in this the state has some roles in this schemes so starting with the sgsy it's a as we discussed that it's a sponsored scheme that is government sponsored scheme so the both the state as well as the center has its role and the contribution is 25 is to 75 the ratio Im implemented by the commercial banks regional rural banks and the cooperative banks it's being implemented by the commercial banks and the regional rural banks and the cooperative banks though the planning maintenance management is done by the central government officers as well as the bankers next the planning planning implementation and the moni monitoring is done by the drda panchayati raj and the ngos drda is a district rural development authority it's a kind of government body and the panchayati raj again and the ngos non government organizations the purpose to build the micro enterprises in the rural india bring them above uh, above poverty line okay the whole purpose of this swarn jayanti gram swaraj gar yojana is to build the micro enterprises why they are focusing on the micro enterprises because the micro enterprises when someone starts the enterprising it starts giving in employment to the other person so in addition to the development it will also generate the employment that why that's why the micro enterprises are focused in india even if you see the datas uh, from various government sources you will find that 35% of the export are done by the micro that Uh, 30 to 35 percent are employed in the micro, and uh, the GDP contribution is also in the manufacturing sector. This is done contributed by the micro enterprises. That's why the micro enterprises is being are giving are giving push in India. The swarojgaris, who all are swarojgaris, the the one who is assisted by the by this yojana is the swarojgaris. okay next point can be individual group or chosen by the bdo banker and the sarpanch it can be the benefit under this yojana can be given to the individual or group and the individual or the group can be chosen by the uh, bdo or banker or the sarpanch bdo is a block divisional office bdos assisted conditions the condition is that whatever the benefit you are giving benefit in the sense by loan by loan you are assisting that's why we need to learn all these things that's why it's in the jib syllabus because some day out of the other you will have to deal with this when some persons comes to your uh, to approach to get the government schemes and the yojanas so assisted condition is that 50% needs to be given to the scst 40% overall fund will be given to the women and 3% must be given to the disabled person the skill upgradation and the training is being provided under this yojana activity clusters are made what do you mean by activity clusters let's say some district 
is very are very good in some of the things like handicraft let's say the chatisgarh is very famous for the handicraft then they the government choose the areas and they form the clusters so that the enterprises will go uh, will build automatically at that clusters and the revenue will be generated self help groups loan comes from city given okay self help group can uh, uh, as we discussed that groups could all be also be assisted and there is no other better options than assisting the self help groups and loan comes subsidy is given means the loan is given and the subsidy is being given by the central government according to the needs and the requirements revolving fund is being provided under this yojana 20% fund reserved for the infrastructures loans okay the enterprises which helps in the infrastructure building let's say some one started infrastructure uh, related like uh, building the canals or building the uh, roo rooftop harvesting then this 20% fund must be allocated to them maximum 10000 loan in cash in cash maximum loan could be given up to 10000 only group loan subsidy is 50% of the project cost subject to the per capita subsidy of rupees 10000 or 1.25 lakh whichever is less okay the subsidy is being provided is 50% of the project cost up to that the project uh, the subsidy is being given but there is condition that subject to the per capita subsidy of rupees 10000 means let's say if there are 10 members in the group then maximum per person 10000 can be given not more than that or maximum as a whole 1.25 whichever is less so if it's a 10 member then 10000 10000 means 1 lakh or 1.25 lakh which one is less 1 lakh is less then then whichever is less will be chosen so 10000 will be given insurance coverage of 5 years or loan is repaid whichever is less okay insurance cover is also provided in this yojana and uh, and up to 5 years or if before 5 years the loan is repaid then up to that period security 50000 individual only primary security is required and for group 5 lakh only primary security is required but above 50000 for the individual and 5 lakh for the groups the security is required the primary security plus the collateral or someone's guarantee is needed now subsidy maximum is 30% or 7500 whichever is lower and 50% or 10000 whichever is lower for the scst category and for group 50000 50% or 10000 per capita and 1.25 lakh overall is the subsidy maximum could be given now the next is the medium term loans are provided means minimum repayment period is 5 year that need to be keep it in mind refinance available okay what did you mean by refinance let's say we have given some loans under this yojana we are we as a bank so what we can do we can take the same amount of loan from the nabad by uh, showing the paper or document that we have given this much amount of loan so if you want to take the refinance or on the basis of the document you want to take a finance from the nabad then you can take that if you want okay next is swarn janti sahari rozgar yojana that one for the only rural part but this sahari rozgar yojana is for the urban areas now the contribution is same 75 25 central state 75 25 but there is a some exception conditions added in this like in some of the northeast areas or some of the difficult terrain areas the ratio got changed 90 is to 10 that is 90 by central government 10 by the state government now this has five components uh, this sanjanti sahari rozgar yojana run under this five components like the urban the urban self empowerment program urban women self help program skill training for employment promotion among urban poors urban wage employment program urban community development network these are the five important components under which the fund funding or the assistance is being provided to the particular kind of individuals of what they wanted to do under the 
योजना Now USEP, the Urban Self Empowerment Program, uh, Employment Program, as the name suggests, it's for the employment generation and the support. Now the thirty percent loans or the funds should be given to the SCST, three percent for the differently abled persons. Maximum loan is two lakh of rupees. Subsidy twenty five percent of loan, and no collateral is required, and margin is five percent under this USEP. and uh, next uwsp urban women self help program urban it's for the urban poor women group only okay this uh, under this urban women self help program only the group can be provided assistant no individual is uh, assisted under this uh, program subsidy at least for subsidy the group should have at least 5 women in the group maximum subsidy is 3 lakh or 35% of the loan or 60000 per member is the maximum subsidy the anyone could gain under this component of the swan janti sahari rozgar yojana the next is step up step up is skill training for employment and promotion among urban poor the skill formation as the name suggests it's for the skill formation or the upgradation women should be at least 30% under this funding 3% for the differently abled person now 15% for the minority community and maximum training cost 10000 per member not more than that if some if the body or the government is providing training to the person for the skill upgradation then maximum training cost bought by the bank or some other agencies should not be exceeded 10000 of rupees urban wage employment program wage employment in town and cities it's for the wage employment in the town and cities 5 lakh and above population as per 1991 census so the conditions to implement this component of the स्वर्ण जयंती सारी रोजगार योजना इज दैट फाइव लैक पॉपुलेशन शुड बी देयर इन एनी डिस्ट्रिक्ट देन ओनली दिस कंपोनेंट कैन बी अप्लाइड नाउ द मटेरियल लेबर रेशियो इज सिक्सटी फोर्टी व्हाट डज इट मीन इफ द फंडिंग इज डन हंड्रेड रुपीज देन सिक्सटी रुपीज शुड बी स्पेंड ऑन द मटेरियल नॉट मोर देन दैट एंड फोर्टी रुपीज शुड बी स्पेंड इन द वेजेस दैट्स वाई दिस द नेम द कंपोनेंट ऑफ द नेम ऑफ दिस कंपोनेंट इज द वेज एम्प्लॉयमेंट urban wage employment program uwep next ucdn it's a community development and the empowerment program that is being implemented under this sahari uh, swan janti sahari rozgar yojana i think we have completed this we have more pages okay now lock in period for the government subsidy is 3 years at least they have to uh, show the running of their enterprises at least for the 3 years then only they can be availed the subsidies from the government now the margin is 10% and 5% 10% for any general category and 5% for the special category the special category includes scsts um then the differently abled person we we ka section women's also included all these are included in the special categories now the national rural livelihood mission okay this is a jeevika the name itself it's a replacement of the swan janti gram swaraj swarajgar yojana uh, we are not sure that what jib will ask but this scheme swan janti swarajgar yojana got replaced by this nrlm in 2013 and we don't know what they will ask so we are taking both of the component so most of the things are same in both the schemes but the names are changed now the nrlm it's under ministry of rural development the strategy changed from allocation based to the demand driven well, okay in the sgsy what you, what were there it, it was the allocation the money was given according to the need but here 
the plan was made first then uh, then the government sees that what are the demands uh, demands at that time then only they can decide the funding implemented by states perspective implementation plan annual action plans and district mission unit and the block mission management units these are the implemented uh, implementing agency of the nrlm next the maximum revolving fund is 10 to 15000 liability reduction fund the maximum is 15 1500 per members and the cif community investment fund 3000 per member uh, these are not this nrlm or uh, nrum is not included in the syllabus we are just taking because they can ask uh, anything as it's related to the sgsy and sgum as, as it's an extension of that that's why we are taking just the basics cif is the community investment fund maximum 3000 per member is given interest subvention 7% maximum 3 lakh per shg okay what interest subvention is let's say the loan is at 10% but the government is providing the loan for 7% the bank will give the loans disperse the loan at 10% but whatever the difference in the rate of the amount will be given or contributed by the government to the banking agency that's why the interest subvention concept comes ajivika self development program this is also also called the ajivika self development program now the nulm national urban livelihood mission replaces the swan janti uh, sahari rozgar yojana and it's uh, implemented by the mahua that is ministry of housing and urban development authority now next scheme it's an important one slrs scheme for scheme of liberation and rehabilitation of scavengers the maximum the age range between the one who can take the advantage of this yojana the age limit prescribed is 18 to 50 years no minimum qualification is required under this yojana 6500 under dri differential rate of interest it means the rate which is much lower as compared to the running rate or the bank rate as set as a benchmark this dri is rate are very uh, at a very low rate that is 4% if its the amount is up to 6500 the loan can be given under the dri less than 50000 of rupees margin 15% is maintained and this 15% is not contrib contributed by the person who is taking the benefit under this yojana but by the scdc state scheduled caste development corporation subsidy is given by the 50% maximum and the next subsidy is maximum uh, subsidy maximum is given 50% but the uh, in the amount maximum 10000 could be given or uh, the maximum is that 10000 of rupees though if the person has taken only 10000 of loans and uh, the subsidy is 5000 is making 50% so whichever is less is being taken 20000 uh, okay if the amount or the loan is given up to 25000 of rupees the loan processing should be done within fortnight loan disposal and if it exceeds that 25000 of rupees the loan disposal should be within 8 to 9 weeks i now the next is pradhan mantri employment generation program it's only dedicated for the employment generation and this is a scheme given introduced by the government of india for the benefit of the or create the employment under this yojana or program now the maximum project cost is 25 lakh or 10 lakh under 25 lakh under manufacturing and 10 lakh under service sector now one very important thing that you we have learned in the msme msme d act that what were the limit the limit starts with the 25 and 10 lakh itself and it goes up to the 10 crore and and uh, 5 crore of rupees in the manufacturing and service sector area respectively so below that this pmegp the person can take loan under pmegp 
if the unit cost is up to this much amount cost of land not included in the project cost now the margin money is the government subsidy margin money or the government subsidy is as per given below that is under area wise urban the maximum subsidy can be given is 15% if it belongs to the general category and the special category is 25% special category includes every one includes SCSTs, women's differently abled persons etc and in the rural areas the subsidy is 25% and the 35% project cost is is equal to the capital employed the capital expense done by the entrepreneur and plus working capital that is one cycle plus 10 percent margin or five percent margin depends on, upon the general category or the special category the beneficiaries are individual entrepreneur institutional cooperative societies self-help group trust now the w Working capital utilization is 100% within 3 years, 75% on average. This is our conditions applied. Because if working capital is given to some person like let's say 2 lakh of rupees and he is not utilizing the amount. Successfully running the businesses because he is not utilizing the amount. The under, the under utilization of the fund is being done. That's why these conditions are applied in this. Now the project application is being given is being conducted or or the person if someone wants the loan against the PMEGP then he can put the loan application to the KVIC and if KVIC allowed then he will go with the documents to any particular bank and the bank will give the loans accordingly now village industries if industries is opened or applied in the rural areas then 1 lakh of rupees maximum okay this is a village industries is is applied and the amount spent is 1 lakh in the plain area 1.5 lakh in the hilly area and the 4.5 lakh in the andaman and nicobar this is the maximum amount is allowed in the rural areas now above 18 years of age required under this loaning agreement edp training stay in working days if the investment is a uh, project cost is greater than 5 lakh of rupees or 6 working days if the project cost is less than 5 lakh of rupees edp training is nothing but an entrepreneurship development training program in your college you must have this edp cell in my college it was there and we used to take part not as a entrepreneur but as a administrator as an facilitator to facilitate and to give trainings to the person to do the businesses or to promote businesses or entrepreneurship in India we have in, in, in our college collateral free up to 10 lakh of rupees and above 5 lakh and up to 25 lakh CGT MSc guarantee is required okay up to 10 lakh no collateral is required though primary security is mandatory up to 10 lakh also but above 5 to 25 lakh the guarantee should be taken by the CGT MSE. CGT MSE is a credit guarantee fund trust for micro small enterprises. It gives guarantee on behalf of the person. Only project allowed and the definition of the family under this Yojana is the husband and the spouse. No parents are included. Urban area unit is the D under DIC permission. So if some person wants to open unit other than the urban uh, rural area other than the rural areas and he wants to open in some of the urban areas so he needs a permission first under uh, of the DIC that is district industry center then only he can open the branches of the uh, branches of the industry he wants to open in the urban areas so that's it with the chapter you need to go through the question bank or any questions chapter wise related to this chapter in order to keep these things in mind these are very factual and that's why it tends to fog uh, forgotten that so you what you need you just need a revision and revision is best possibly could be done through the practicing questions seeing questions revis revising questions 
so it will be very beneficial if you solve or you practice questions as much as you could what we what i did is the getting or read the chapter once from the book or through some good sources then after that i used to follow the question bank i used to dedicately giving my time in the question bank seeing the questions revising the questions with that it helped a lot not to me but also some very close friends of mine in cracking the exams so i think this strategy will work and work learn hard study hard and crack the exam thank you